Thank you for tuning in, guys. Here we are on Neo Planet S, down at the bottom left-hand side, as our Blue Protoss player, he uh, went for an early attack there with those Blink Stalkers in the previous game, unfortunately, was not able to take advantage of that. It is Fnatic's Night End. And his opponent up in the top right hand side, able to hold his economy together after a fast expansion and then slowly take advantage of that, especially in a tech position, it is Runa. Alright, so... Uh, so some of you guys, who, who said um, we're going to have a 2-0? Do you still think it's going to be a 2-0 to Runa or is uh, Night End going to be able to fight back in game number 2 here? I'm interested to see who thinks what. Post in the chat. And of course, thank you for tuning in. Um, I know some of you, some of you EU guys from, from uh, anywhere in Europe or well, most places in Europe. But apparently, I have learned today that some places in Europe have really bad internet. Um, but uh, I know some of you EU guys are thinking, oh my god, this stream is really bad quality. I'm sorry, I'm in Australia, I do what I can, but I love casting me some StarCraft, and DreamHack is my favorite event of the year, so uh, it's always good to be able to participate, so I'm sorry if the stream looks a little bit crappy, but it's the best we can do. Hopefully, I can make up for it with some uh, decent casting. Runa going for the gateway into the gas, both players. Well, actually, it looks like Night End is just going to go with his double gas here. Picks up the double before the Cyber goes down, whereas Runa is going to play a little bit more uh, old school here. He's going to let the second gas go for just a moment. He gets his, uh, means his Cyber does come up a tiny, teensy bit quicker. Not really anything too, uh, you know, significant, but, you know, it's a difference I thought I'd mention. So, uh, Neo Planet S. Another map again where there's, it's, a, I would say maybe a tiny bit more exposed for blinkins and things like that. So either player can certainly look to go for some blink attacks. You've got this uh, large area here where you can blink into. It can be a little bit annoying to have to deal with that kind of thing. Um, let me just, uh, there you go. Sorry, I was actually drawing on, uh, on the map there. I don't know why it doesn't come up sometimes, but there you go. Um, so you've got this position where you can sort of blink into, we've got a large sort of area that can be attacked by Blink Stalkers, and you know, we'll see what happens because I, I'd be interested to see if Runa is going to go for like a counter attack kind of, uh, a counter strategy as it were, with uh, Blink Stalkers of his own, but it looks like he'll start us off with a, um, a Mothership Core, Zealot also coming out, and a Stalker as well, so nice normal sort of opening here from Runa. While well, Night End back at home, Twilight Council yet again. So I think we are going to see another Blink build from, uh, actually, hmm. He's still got a little bit of gas. Yeah, it's not enough gas for a uh, for a DT build. So it looks as if we will get another uh, Blink Stalker play coming out of Night End to start us off in this game. Interesting to see that he did get a Sentry first off. But we'll keep that in mind. As uh, Runa now slowly makes his way across the map, we've got a Zealot just about to walk into a fellow Zealot, and a Sentry is there as well, so Runa's not going to win this battle, he will be forced to back off there with that uh, with the Zealot and the Stalker as well, but back inside the main base, looks like the Mothership Core going to get a free scout, going to be able to see what's going on, you can see that there is a, uh, a Twilight Council there. And both of these players are going to go for Blink, so very, very normal sort of Blink plays coming out of both these players. Night End uh, is almost, he's getting some really good damage done on that Mothership Core. Wow, she just got out. 19 health left on that Mothership Core. Cutting it extremely close is Runa, but uh, he actually loses his first Zealot there, unfortunately for him. But Runa is also getting his Blink Tech going. So we are going to have a Blink battle between these two players. Runa has now started up a uh, Robo Facility as well. So we're going to see the... Uh, he can't send the Mothership Core across. So he said, alright, I need to do it a little bit more old school and get out a uh, an Observer to help out with that. But, you know... Oh. <laughs> 
I was about to say that Mothership Core doesn't need to run, but uh, we will start the Stalker production here from both players. Three gates going to be in operation for both of them. Of course, Night End does have a small advantage in that he is going to have a little bit of a higher HP Mothership Core if it needs to go into battle. Whereas Runa cannot really send this one in. She, that, that Mothership Core is just going to have to stay back for the moment. And uh, it looks like we will have... An immortal coming out. So uh, perhaps a little bit more of a defensive measure by Runa here in game number two on Neo Planet S. He is actually setting up a proxy pylon, so uh, it may not be in the end. Yeah, he's going to. Uh, we've got Night End setting up a fourth gate here, so he is probably going to get started with some pressure very soon. Blink is now finished up. He doesn't have a proxy pylon, though. I'm a little bit surprised about that. But uh, another stalker comes out. No probes have moved out just as of yet for Night End. I'm a little bit surprised about that, but uh, again, we do have a strong force here from Runa, and in fact, both these players may just decide to play very passive here. So Runa coming up the ramp, trying to find out what's going on. Unfortunately, did not see that fourth gate, I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh no, he didn't actually see four gates in total, so he's, uh, he will need to be very careful about what's going to go on here. Looks like Runa is going to expand. Again, playing a, uh, a bit of a standard sort of game here with the, uh, like a safe sort of expansion based build. We have Night End now moving out. He's building up more stalkers. This guy is going for an attack. He's not saving for a Nexus at all. He has said it is go time. He's going to build up that stalker count, slowly make his way across the ice. And we'll see what damage he can get done because the unit count is looking pretty interesting here. We've got uh, nine stalkers out for Runa, but he does have an immortal. And we've also got a second immortal about to pop out. So this does look very similar to the situation we saw in the previous game, whereby Runa was able to expand very quickly and then hold it together. We'll see if Night End is going to get the same sort of uh, deflection against himself here. What is that? Oh, it's a pylon. A weirdly placed pylon here for... Uh, for uh, Night End at the moment, but it looks like he's going to try and make his way inside. Stalker's attacking into that Immortal. A nice amount of damage done. Takes out an Immortal of Runa, and it looks as if Night End is definitely going to try and go in for the kill here. A pylon set up just outside the main, the natural base of Runa. Runa has to be so careful with this Immortal. A blink on top of that Immortal, and uh, it could be lights out, but it looks like Runa has got his own Stalkers here. It's uh, actually almost even with the count of Stalkers from Night End, so... We'll get a really interesting blink battle between these two players, and it looks like Night End just the, being very careful with his blink. The Immortal coming into the fight. One of those took is very lucky to still be alive. The Mothership Call is going into the battle yet again, but Runa has activated the uh, Nexus Cannon there, and it looks like Night End will be deflected again, at least for the time being. The Stalker count sitting at 14 each, but Runa does have the Nexus Cannon to fall back on. As we can see, the players constantly bringing in more Stalkers as best as they can. Stalkers now coming in for Night End, and the, they number 15, so Night End actually has the advantage here. A blink forward from Runa, able to get some damage done, and with the Nexus Cannon continuously firing here, I'm very, very questionable about Night End can just continually staying in the range of that, but he has now taken a huge advantage, and an Immortal about to pop, like, it is on the way, but I mean, what is Runa going to do here? Because the Nexus Cannon has now run out, and Night End is looking to go for the kill right here. He has a total of 15 Stalkers. Blinking back, being very careful, doesn't want to move into a, uh, he really doesn't want to move into a choke point here without his Blink available, because there is a lot of surface area for Runa to attack into. And as we can see, with some very, very simple but skillful Blink backs from Night End, I think he's going to be able to take this. The Immortal comes out of the Robo, and, well, that guy's going to do a decent amount of damage from the high ground if Night End's not careful. Uh, but it looks like with a blink on, Night End is just too strong here. 13-2 and a GG from Runa.